All right, hi everybody, John Meadows here, and the last time, this is my story, and the last thing we talked about was the Arnold Classic, and how I brutally made weight, I shared some pictures with you there on how I looked, but there was a lot more that happened after that, so stay tuned, I'm going to give you the rundown on five shows in six weeks. <laughs> All right, hi everybody, John Meadows here. And again, the last time we talked, I believe it was part 14 maybe. And we talked about the Arnold Classic and what that meant to me to compete in my hometown. I shared some pictures. If you guys haven't watched that video, go back and watch part 14. I was absolutely ripped out of my mind. I suffered like I had never suffered before in my life. And, um, you know, so I looked at the contest schedule. So what was next? What happened after that? Well. I turned pro a little bit older and I wanted to get some shows in, right? And I saw that they had five shows coming up in six weeks and I decided to do all five of them. So I went to Toronto, I went to Alaska, then I went to Chicago or, and then Texas, I believe, and then um, Charlotte, North Carolina actually. So. I wanted to share with you today because people are like, you are insane, you're out of your mind. So uh, the first show that came around was, was the Toronto Pro Show. And I have a, a, a picture there I want to share with you too where you'll see me uh, lying there in bed. The story behind that is was I was really having a hard time making weight, so I have three pairs of sweat clothes on, I'm underneath heavy sheets, and I have the temperature maxed out in the room. So I basically tried to sleep under the sheets, which is kind of hard to fall asleep when you're sweating like that. But I basically laid there all day and just sweat. Then I would get up, turn the hot shower on, put towels under the bottom of the door so it would turn into a steam room. I was going in and out, just sweating. Now, this was very challenging because what happened was at the check-ins, uh, the check-ins were in the afternoon and I'm still ticked off to this day about this. The only people I have to weigh in are the 212 guys and they checked us in last. So they went through all the other divisions and we checked in like at 11 o'clock at night, we actually weighed in. So I went all through the day and I had no food, no water. And I remember walking up to the scales and I remember my calves were cramping, I was so depleted. And then we had to be back at the venue the next morning and we were on stage, so I stayed up all night eating, but when you're at that level of depletion, you can't really look your absolute best. I was pretty daggone hard though, and I'm going to pop some more pictures up here so you can see. Um, I was in the second call out. I was very disappointed with that, and, um, but hey, you know, those things happen, so I, I didn't get too down about it because I felt like, you know what, I didn't look too bad. I was close. Like if I would have had some more time. I probably could have peaked a little better. So there was something coming up the next week in Alaska. And so what I did was I got home. I literally got my family. We went on a plane to California and I trained in California for a couple of days. And then we flew to Alaska and I trained there uh, with my buddy Ed Koo, who is also a co-owner of Granite. And uh, this was really fun because the, the, the promoters there, I really, I really appreciated the promoters there. They let us weigh in like at one o'clock the day before the show. So that gave me all afternoon to eat and to train. So what I did, and I talk about this a lot of my seminars, is I ate a lot. And then I trained, I tried to push all the carbs into my muscle. And um, I got some cool pictures here where you can see how full I got. And then after training, I ate a massive meal at the steakhouse, like three desserts. I can't even imagine how many calories I must have had. And I woke up and I looked really, really sharp. I looked, I was back to 222. I was really big, I was full, I was hard. And I had a pretty big breakfast. I probably would have been okay if I didn't have the breakfast. I think I probably got a little watery from that. But all in all, I really liked my look. And I ended up um, in the top five. Uh, I placed in that show. Uh, my buddy Sean Clarita beat me by one point. I thought I had him at that one. And um, so I felt really good about that. And I also felt good about my approach. It was amazing how much it helped to have that extra time to just eat and to rehydrate after going through a hard weight cut. 
So I was very excited, and actually I think it was Texas the next week, not Chicago. But I talked to the judges, and they were like, John, you've got to go to Texas. So I went to Texas the following week. So I got home. Actually, I went to California on the way back with my family. We trained again in California, and then my family went home, and I flew to Texas. So the following weekend, I was in Texas. I had to do the same weight cut again, brutal. I had to lose 10 pounds um, in the span of a day. And the uh, weigh-in, though, was, was uh, like 4 or 5 o'clock, so it wasn't too bad. And um, afterwards, I remember drinking two liters of water pretty quickly. And um, I felt great the next day. I felt amazing. I was in the first call-out. I ended up placing fourth place. That's this trophy here, by the way. Um, I think it is. Yeah, so the Europa, fourth place. So feeling really good. Placed in two shows in a row, was feeling great, and that was stop three. And then the next show was in Chicago, and at this point I'm thinking, okay, I'm getting some Olympia qualification points. So then I went to Chicago, and it was a repeat of Canada. The weigh-in was really, really late. I had a really hard time. Um, I had to be back up early the next morning. I had to try to stay up all night and eat again. Didn't quite look my best. Again, I was really big, but I, there was a little crispness that just wasn't there. So I was relegated back to the second call out. It wasn't the first call out. So I was a little disappointed there. And um, so there was, uh, then I actually had a week off. I had a break before the North Carolina show. Um, I believe that's how the schedule played out. And so then I went to North Carolina. And it was in the middle of the summer. It was brutally hot. I remember just sweating like crazy. But um, North Carolina, the show was very well run. And it was, uh, it, uh, it was another show where the weigh-in was a little earlier, so I had a little bit more time to eat. It wasn't so I was back feeling good again, and I was in the first call-out again. So isn't it amazing how timing makes such a difference? So this was so important to me. So if you look at my competitive history as a pro, the shows where I weighed in really late at night are the shows where I was not in the first call out. The shows where I weighed in earlier in the day, I was in the first call out in all those shows. So, you know, people, I think sometimes people don't understand the, the difference in hours, literally in hours, as to how it'll affect your look when you get on stage. Now I see these, the Mr. Olympia is coming up next weekend. And I'm so jealous. Like, I wish I was part of that. And those guys have an extra day to weigh in. And I think to myself, man, if I could have had two days instead of one day, how could I, you know, how, how I could have looked. But, um, hey, that's the nature of the beast. And, but I thought it was interesting. I thought you guys would find it interesting as to how the weigh-in times and all that really impacts you if you're, if you're a guy like me and you really struggle to make weight. If you don't struggle to make weight, then it's a non-factor. But for me, I always felt like I was in my best at my 220s. So coming down to 212 was always pretty challenging. But um, so anyways, that's what happened. That was the incredible, brutal, incredibly brutal stretch of five shows in six weeks. And, um, you know, placed in uh, first call out in, in three of those shows. So it was really, it was really fun. I am so glad I did that. I will never do it again, but I'm so glad I did that. It was fun. It was great. I felt like I made up for a lot of lost time. And I uh, really enjoyed it. And my family got to come with me to the show in North Carolina and to the show in Alaska. So we kind of got to have some good times together. And that's kind of one of the things I like to do, too, is when I did these shows, some of them I would take my family with me. And, um, but they couldn't train or they couldn't travel with me every single week. Um, but anyway, so that is part number 15. But that's not the end of the story. Stay tuned and you'll hear about part number 16.